if you look at the sure program where we are getting the, the, the libraries, I don't, when we say gains of deregulation, it's not as if that is an excess money. If you listen, you know that we are borrowing one point something trillion to fund capital. So even if you deregulate, the only thing that we borrow less, because out of the one point something trillion that is for deregulation, 50% of it, or about 50% of it, 48 or so, go to states, local governments, and uh, judiciary, other arms of government that have first line charge. The states, if you look at the procure that was produced, you see that the federal government has 50% of it. 50% go to the states and the local government. So it's not as if the whole 1.7 trillion is for the federal government. So will it be In correct? the case of power, yes. you know, our approach to power is now different. We are trying to make sure that generation distribution is privatized. Government will only concentrate in transmission. And we have challenges. We have some labor issues, legacy issues. And these are the kind of issues that normally push Nigeria backward. Maybe let me use this opportunity to really plead with Nigerians, especially uh, the, uh, our labor leaders and uh, those who have been working for Nigeria. They are working for us in all sectors. When Nigerian Airways was nose diving, People notice that, look, Nigeria Airways, if you go this way, it will, uh, it will run aground. And they wanted to privatize it. There were labor issues, people, all kinds of excuses, just like people are saying now. Finally, the Nigeria Airways ran aground. Nigeria shipping line, the same thing. When they noticed that, look, at the rate it was going, you better privatize. The labor issues, there is no argument who did not put Iran like that. Look at Mafcon in Port Harcourt. Look at the uh, Levy Petrochemicals in Port Harcourt. Look at uh, Jaikota Steel Mill. All these major investments of government, when the sense of weakness is coming, they want to give it to the private sector. The labor issues. Even Nitel, um, we are just thanking God that before Nitel collapsed, GSM came in. Otherwise, by now, it didn't have been, in Nigeria, it would have been. I don't know how the world would have described us as a country where you cannot call out. Uh, even if you're out, you cannot call anybody. There's no reason why NITEL collapsed. Anyway, it's not because of GSM. The countries that have GSM years back still have landlines working. So if, even if GSM didn't come in, NITEL would have like collapsed just like Nigerian Airways. And now the, it's going to the real economy of the nation. It's like, oh, maybe a leg one gone, another leg gone, the hand gone. Right hand gone. Now it's a juggler. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's coming to your neck. So the people are still making arguments. There are the same arguments people use. That's why we have no national carrier here with gone. The same argument, Nigerian Civil Lines gone. The same argument, Ajokuta. The same argument, NAFCON. The same argument, the Limited. The same argument, all the major investments of government gone. And the same argument is on the ground. Uh, we prove that we are committed. And that is why we say that the, the little British space government will have, we'll use it to intervene massively so that in one way, yes, maybe the cost of uh, PMS increase a little. But in another way, many more young people will have jobs. So many more families will have source of income through their children, through people who have not been working. Many well, economic activities will take place. For example, if the road work is going on, the women that sell more and more granite and others to the people who work, they don't make a living. The people who run, transport, carry people to their sites and back, make a living. They are not employed by the contractors. The contractors themselves give subcontracts out to people who supply shipping for them, who supply some cases stand or latrite or others or hire the trucks. So there are so many people directly and indirectly gain from one major road project that is going on. Okay. And so if we have so many of these road projects that are going on, that's why we have selected major uh, infrastructure, road and bridges, and other irrigation across the country. So you see that almost every all parts of this country, there are major activities will be going on. And that is just the federal government interventions alone. And the states are going to do a similar thing. 
well, local governments, I don't want to go into that area because that's the one area that is quite touching in Nigeria. Okay. But if we are all intervening, you see that people who will make a living directly and indirectly will multiplied by uh, factors. All right, Your Excellency, um, just before I ask Steve to uh, let Steve take his question, I was just going to ask, from what you said, there's a point that came out from it, which is the issue of the 1.3. Would it be correct to assume that substantial part of that money was borrowed? Or would that be wrong? For the capital? The, no, the 1.4 trillion that we have spent on the petrol, if it's on, on subsidy, would it be correct yes, that it's course, substantial no, part when, of it was borrowed? When, you see, every money that comes to government belongs to government. If you have a budget divided into recurrent and capital, and recurrent you have overhead and personnel, then if your capital budget is 1.3, let us say your capital budget is 1.3, and you borrow 1.3 to do that to, uh, and again, you spend 1.3 to subsidize for a petroleum product. So invariably, the whole 1.3 is borrowed. So in essence, we've borrowed yes, money to... Yes, we have to... borrowed money. Okay. Thank you very much, Your President, uh, Mr. President. We cannot yes. continue to subsidize with borrowed money. Okay. Mr. President, thank you. I'll let Saudi Arabia can subsidize because they are not borrowing money. Kuwait can subsidize because they are not borrowing money. And I used to ask people and find out. There is no country with 50% of the population of Nigeria that subsidizes petroleum products. And I say people should find out. These days of internet, you just punch your computer. Any country with 50, we are one, uh, uh, 167 million people. I think there was somebody was giving an example about UK uh, paying uh, health services and so on, and I laughed. I said, look, this is actually, you don't confuse young people. Tell the UK government not to, to remove tax alone from petroleum products. Don't talk about uh, UK is an oil producing nation, but tell them just to remove tax. Tax. I'm not talking about subsidizing. Tell the UK government just remove tax on. The, the Prime Minister will prefer to resign than to say he's removing tax because he cannot run the country. But see, those areas where they intervene are those areas that affect the very poor people their health system. The rich people don't cure. If you key into their health system, you have even operation, they will give you painkillers for you to key up and wait. 